Hello everyone, it is Matimus. Thank you for joining me on the video today. I really appreciate you stopping by. We are once again talking about anti-tank guided missiles, and this weapons platform is something that you should know about if you know anything about anti-tank weapons. It is quite prominent in the defense world, the Spike anti-tank guided missile. Pretty much developed by Israel, we all know that uh, they know how to make their weapons and defense platforms because it is part of their day-to-day, -day, unfortunately. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about the platform as a whole. There are multiple variations of this uh, missile, which is interesting to see. It's not just a shoulder launch missile. This is a multi-range capable weapon, which overall is really practical and makes a lot of sense. One of the big pros for this missile, for sure. So Raphael, based in Haifa, Israel, manufactures the Spike family of anti-armor weapons. The weapons are very lightweight, fire and forget anti-tank missiles, and use electro-optical and fiber optic technologies. The systems are used mainly by infantry soldiers, special rapid reaction forces like special forces, ground forces of vehicles and, surprisingly, helicopter air crew on aircraft. The Spike anti-tank missile family includes the Spike SR with a range of 800 meters, the Spike MR otherwise known as the Jill with a range of 2500 meters and the Spike LR with a 4000 meter range and the Spike ER formerly known as the NTT Dandy with a range of 8 thousand meters. Spike LR and Spike ER can also be fitted on light combat vehicles and a package for mounting Spike ER on helicopters is also available. The Spike missile system is currently in production and in service with the Israeli, Dutch, Chilean, Colombian, Finnish, German, Polish, Italian, Peruvian, Spanish and Singapore armed forces. Interestingly enough and just as a recent development, India decided no, we don't want to buy these missiles anymore, um, which was very surprising to me. And when I heard of the news, considering the amount of hype that was made for this missile being sent to India, I was shocked. Honestly, I was shocked. I thought they would roll with it. Um, I haven't done much research quite yet as to why they haven't. Maybe I'll do a video on it in the future, but really surprising nonetheless. In October 2003, the Israeli Defense Force awarded a production contract for Spike C4I the Spike ER system fitted with a networking capability. Now, when I say networking capabilities, you millennials, no, I do not mean checking on Facebook as you're about to destroy a tank. It basically means that the system is hooked up to a multitude of different uh, communication systems to allow it to coincide with other troops on the battlefield engaging targets. The Spike launcher is fitted with a variant of the Azimuth Comet Global Positioning System. It is a laptop computer with a VHF data link which allows it to locate targets from long distance and especially with 8,000 meter ranges. You're going to probably want that. In June 2004, a joint venture company, Eurospike, was formed by Raphael with Rheinmetall Defense Electronics, formerly STN Atlas Electronique. This followed a cooperation agreement signed by the three companies in November 1998. Eurospike is the prime contractor for the Spike family of missiles in Europe. In May 2000, the Finnish army selected the Spike MR system to meet its requirements for a medium range anti-tank missile system. Of course, Israel has been in some sticky situations in the past and of course the anti-tank guided missile system exploded onto the market, literally, uh, and Israel really wanted to perfect the anti-tank guided missile platform that they were going to use to defend their country. Of course, Israel had a whole choice and host of different anti-tank guided missiles to choose from around the world, however they decided to procure and design their own, and good for them and made a huge, huge sense to them, really. You know, they had a great defense market, as is anyway, um, and they perfected their designs to really bring about the pinnacle of anti-tank guided missile designs, the Spike family. And today, Raphael is still trying to upgrade and produce more advanced weapon systems. There are other variations of the Spike family that have kind of progressed into different things, but Spike, for the most part, is the standard issue for most of the Israeli armed forces anti-tank guided weapon systems. In August 2001, the Dutch Ministry of Defense ordered the Spike MR Jill missile system to replace the Dragon missile of the Royal Netherlands Army and Marine Corps. Raphael is the prime contractor with Rheinmetall, Dale, and other companies. In January 2004, Poland signed a contract with ZM Mesco for the purchase of the Spike LR missile system. ZM Esco manufactured elements of the missiles and began final assembly in 2006. The requirement was for 264 tripod launchers and 2,675 missiles. That's a lot of ordnance. Deliveries began in November 2004 and concluded in 2013. Spain had also placed an order of 260 launchers with 2,600 missiles in replacement of the Milan and Dragon missiles. 
In January 2008, Spain also placed an order for the Spike ER missiles to equip 24 Tiger HAD attack helicopters from Eurocopter. In terms of the missile systems themselves, Spike MR and Spike LR have the same firing post. The firing post consists of the Command Launch Unit, or CLU, otherwise known as the CLU, and the Thermal Imaging Site and Tripod. The system is made ready to fire in less than 30 seconds, which is quite capable for most anti-tank guided weapons platforms of today. The soldier acquires the target and lays the crosshairs of the sight on the aim point on the target using either the day sight with a 10 times power magnification and a 5 degree field of view, or the clip on thermal imaging night sight with a very wide and narrow field of view. In a fire and forget mode, the soldier activates the missile, locking the tracker on the target and pushes the fire button to launch. The missile automatically propels itself towards the target without any additional interaction and this fire and forget capability allows the soldier to option of relocating to a new firing position or to reload immediately for the next engagement. Reloading takes them less than 15 seconds by a competent crew. Of course this is very common for nearly all top down attack munitions or modern day anti-tank guided weapons platforms because we want that ability to shoot and scoot, especially with less backblast which means that basically the vehicle that you're engaging isn't being able to see exactly where that missile came from to try and return fire, but at that point it's a little too late. After missile launch, the missile fires a lofted trajectory and approaches the target on a dive down impact to target. The lofted trajectory and tandem high explosive warhead enables the missile to penetrate tanks equipped with high explosive reactive armor. Of course though there are different tactics and you know, new systems coming out now to prevent these missiles working as effectively but when we're talking about engaging vehicles that don't have these systems let's be honest here folks most tanks don't have much chance of standing against this missile if it gets to the target accurately. The missile has four rectangular fins for aerodynamic control at the rear and four wings at just over halfway from nose to tail of the length of the body. They unfold as the missile leaves the launch canister. The guidance system in the nose of the spike missile, which is quite prominent when you actually look at pictures of the missile, it's kind of that glazed glass look, comprises of a charged couple device or CCD and an imaging infrared seeker, which is what you see on the front. The imaging infrared provides higher sensitivity and improved thermal background rejection characteristics for all weather day and night operation. Spike MR, the medium range version, is a portable fire and forget anti-armor missile system with a range of up to 2.5 kilometers, which is pretty darn impressive. It can have the option of an additional fire, observe and update mode of operation if required. The Spike LR is a portable anti-armor weapon system with a range of up to 4 kilometers, which can be operated in a fire and forget mode as well. It can also fire, observe and update using the fiber optic data link which allows the troops to actually use the clue or the you know infrared sensors and the vision optics on the weapon system to monitor targets and uh, provide data links to other battle group assets to allow for reconnaissance uh, and battle management which is pretty impressive you know you're not just using this thing for engaging targets it can be used as recon that's pretty impressive. Spike LR is equipped with a fiber optic data link guidance system which sends commands to the missile from the launch system and receives into the gunner's field of view images from the seeker. This is pretty clever technology. The gunner can then update his aim point while the missile is in flight using the fiber optic link. This basically means that once you fire the missile you don't have to continue focusing on one target. If someone else has taken on your target, say a tank or another anti-tank guided missile, you can actually adjust its fire to another vehicle. That is impressive. As well as an update target information, the data link allows the gunner to switch the targets but also receive real-time intelligence to perform battle damage assessment once the missile has engaged. The spike system can also work on a non-line of sight or NLOS mode allowing the gunner to operate from a very covered position. This is imperative when it comes to infantry dismount trying to get away from those nasty tanks that can see you from a mile away. Spike LR which can also be installed on light combat vehicles can be used to engage tanks armored vehicles, hardened shelters, and low-flying, slow targets, such as helicopters. The most impressive for me is the Spike ER, otherwise known as the Spike Extended Range. It is an 8km version. The Spike ER also has a larger warhead and is designed to be mounted on a light combat vehicle, but can also be removed and fitted onto a tripod for those infantrymen who have biceps like a boss. The vehicle package includes the missile in its canister, a remotely controlled turret with a target acquisition system, and electronics and gunner's station with multi-function display, control panel and hand grip. This allows for even better long-range engagements and very, very accurate battle damage assessment. 
A bi-directional fiber optic data link provides Spike ER with a fire and steer mode in addition to two other modes. This means that the gunner does not need to lock onto the target before the launch, but can choose the target after launch and steer the missile to the target's most vulnerable point or hand over the fire and forget system once it's in the air. This is incredible technology folks, basically allowing your missile to be fully customizable once it's in the air. Javelin is a top down attack munition and very very capable. I have to admit, in terms of all anti-tank guided weapon systems out there, the spike takes the biscuit for me. It is just unbelievable technology and I love it. Raphael has developed a version of Spike ER with a penetration, blast and fragmentation warhead which only explodes after penetration of the target, e.g. a wall, and minimizing collateral damage. Spike ER launchers have been developed for also helicopters. The four round launch requires no modifications to the helicopter at all, other than software integration. It can be fitted to a variety of helicopters, including the AH-64 Apache, which can carry 16 of these missiles, the AH-1S Cobra, the A-129 and the MD-500, along with MI-24s and others. The Spike NLOS non-line of sight missile is a multi-platform electro-optical attack missile that can be fired from land, air and also naval platforms. The missile can hit non-line of sight targets within a range of 25 kilometers. Equipped with a range of warheads and RF communication, Spike NLOS can be deployed in offensive and defensive scenarios, most impressively on ships. And when I see these things being used on ships, this is what I'm saying is this platform and this technology has been broadened to the point of shooting short distance, shooting medium, shooting long, shooting extremely long, and shooting into space. It is very impressive technology and I'm really, really loving this weapons platform. A prototype of the Spike LR missile mounted on a Marvin ITV-1 4x4 all-terrain vehicle has been also built by Raphael. The system is called the Mantis and consists of six Spike LR missiles with Raphael Spike T-31 systems and a reconnaissance sensor including CCD day cameras, thermal images, laser rangefinder and GPS, basically turning it into a very modernized tank killer on wheels. So overall guys, let's be honest here, uh, it is a very capable weapons platform to engage tanks and multitudes of other targets, whether it be ships, bunkers, uh, in-depth positions, uh, all sorts of stuff. And I love the fact that when you put this missile in the air, you can monitor the missile via the clue as it's in flight and it communicates to different assets in the brigade or battle group. That is so, so important when it comes to strategic advantage because you can have a platoon of anti-tank teams locating tanks as the flipping missiles in air and allow the other guys to pinpoint targets before they even launch. Um, and if they're in in-depth positions which you can't see or behind cover, you basically have a missile that's not only just about to kill a tank, but scouts out the rest of the positions that that tank is nearby. The only thing that concerns me with this missile system is its cost. Of course, with all these fancy gizmos and gadgets that it's using, and the fact that the missile has so many different sensors and communication systems inside of it, it's not going to be cheap. Just like the Javelin, when you fire it, it's literally like dollar dollar bills flying out the tube. Uh, but in terms of capabilities, if that's what you're looking for, if you're wanting a tank killer that is so accurate and so capable of providing not only deadly effect, but recon assets at the same time, yeah, it's just a really good thing to have on your side and maybe in terms of cost it's worth it. I don't know overall though. I think that's probably going to be its only weakness is the cost of the missile system. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's why India may have cancelled the contract. I'm not sure, maybe I'm wrong. Check me in the uh, comment section if I am wrong. But it is a pricey system, I'm sure. But overall, really, really impressive. Personally, I would say that this is probably my favorite ATGM. Um, Javelin is in a very close second. This is honestly what I feel Canada needs to buy. Canada, get smart, get with the program, spend some money and get some good ATGMs. If we're not going to get Javelin, then look into other options. And I've just eaten my own words saying that this one's too expensive and you know what Canada's like. But we should. We should have a very, very capable ATGM. Sorry, this guy's face just cracks me up. He's just like shaking his brother's hand. Um... 
But we should. This is honestly where I feel Canada should be investing money into. The technology that is in these missile systems is something that I think Canada should set the benchmark for, along with Israel and other nations that are using it. And it's being proven and tested to an extent where everybody's pretty much happy with it. And of course, that's just my opinion. No one cares about my opinion, especially my own governments. So there's no point discussing that. But I hope you enjoyed today's video, everyone. Uh, let me know what you think of this ATGM. Do you think it is in comparison to some even Eastern weapon systems similar to the Cornet? and the Conkers and all the sort of Russian-based anti-tank guided weapons platforms, which also are very capable. Uh, the Javelin weapons platform, TOW, which is obviously, you know, wire guided, a little bit different technology. But do you think uh, the spike is meeting up to the standards of what those missile systems are at? I'd really love to hear your opinion on it. Anyone who has served with this missile, please, please come speak to me in Discord. I'd love to listen to your opinion uh, and how well you think it is, or maybe you don't like it, Abby. Really intrigued as to know your opinion on it. If you want to come chat with me, folks, and discuss any type of military content, hardware, tactics, uh, even if you're willing to join the British Army or the Canadian Army now, I guess, now that I'm part of it, uh, come have a chat. We do some gaming on there too. If you want to support my channel, uh, being that this is military content on YouTube, for the most part, it gets demonetized. And although I'm not here to make money, it is nice to, you know, when you put a lot of hard effort into your channel, which I do, uh, to get a bit of, uh, you know, payback for that so if you want to support my channel i'd really appreciate you go check out my patreon account and thank you to everyone in advance for doing so and to those who, who have already donated thank you very very much uh, i am on facebook i am on disgusting twitter so if you want to use that too um, but most of all i tend to communicate via discord so come hang out on there i'd love to speak with you guys uh, for those who've been messaging on facebook i apologize i haven't replied i didn't know facebook uh, had this kind of secret message channel that you had to click on a button to get to that doesn't notify of anything so i'm trying to get around to replying to all of you so i apologize if i haven't replied in the past um thanks again for joining folks have a wonderful day and stay tuned for further upcoming military content uh click on that little bell button by the subscribe button to be notified of it bye bye